When it comes to the big one, experts agree that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. One of the scenarios calls for a 7.8 earthquake on the San Andreas, and that would rock Southern California for hundreds of miles, and the damage could last months or even years. Hurricanes, fires, earthquakes. Over the last few months, we've had an all too real glimpse of what Mother Nature is truly capable of. And just how quickly a disaster can turn major cities upside down. Debris everywhere, roof's totally gone, rooms exposed. Harvey is no joke. Something that should serve as a staunch reminder to Southern California that we could be next. Earthquake, earthquake shaking expected in 57 seconds. When you live here in Southern California, you just have to say, it will happen. Earthquake expert Dr. Lucy Jones says there are more than 300 faults in Southern California, and we all live within five miles of at least one of those faults. While any of these faults are capable of jolting SoCal, it's no surprise to those of us who live here, experts point to the San Andreas as the one most likely to produce a large quake. When we have a big San Andreas earthquake, it'll be felt in Las Vegas and in Arizona. Um, it may be felt in the Bay Area. The scenario projects that the San Andreas could yield a 7.8 magnitude quake, 11 times stronger than the 7.1 that hit Mexico City in September and 44 times stronger than the 1994 Northridge quake. My bed is under that pile right there. If a 7.8 quake ruptures the San Andreas, it could hit the Salton Sea and then run 186 miles to Lake Hughes, shaking everything in its path and potentially setting off other faults causing additional quakes. Everything that crosses the fault will be broken. Roads, railways, gas pipelines, water systems, electric transmission lines, all of these things cross the fault and will be now offset 10 to 30 feet. That means roads and freeways fractured, landslides triggered, water, power, sewage, communications severed. Modern life is a system of systems and every one of them is vulnerable. It's not about dying, it's about being bankrupt and losing your home and having no place to be. And the number of deaths and damage to the region would be staggering. The scenario says more than 1,800 people would die. Entire buildings and homes, roughly 300,000, either destroyed or badly damaged, and $213 billion in damages. We always plan for the worst case scenario. Chris Ibsen of the Los Angeles Emergency Management Department says it could take up to 18 months to fully repair our water system and electrical grid. But that isn't even our biggest concern. What is going to be the priority if this happens? So if that scenario hits, we're looking at uh, about 1,600 fires approximately uh, igniting. In the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, 90% of the damage was caused by fire. In 2011, Japan's quake caused another issue, a tsunami. Is that something we need to worry about? To create a tsunami, the fault has to be underwater and it has to change the shape of the seafloor. So Southern California does not have an offshore fault capable of doing that. And the experts stress we might not know when or exactly where, but we know a big quake is coming. And now it's up to you to be prepared. We want people to do something today to be better prepared for tomorrow. The earthquake is inevitable, but the disaster is not. And we can make a difference by the choices we make, it'll make it be a lot less damaging. And we have information on CBSLA.com on how you can sign up for disaster notifications in case of an emergency like an earthquake.